Okay, GoPro 8 review, two months in. It's been properly field tested now. I've written notes. This is gonna be a professional video. Good morning and welcome from uh, Nizawa. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons. I'll start off with the cons and just interspersed throughout this whole video, I'm going to use some of the footage that I've been recording over the last two months and just put that in so it makes a lot more sense. Okay, kicking things off. The biggest con is battery life. It sucks. <laughs> There's no other way of saying it. I've taken the camera out a couple of times and I've maybe got 40 minutes worth of footage before it's just died. Sometimes it'll be on about 25 20% and it will just go straight from that to zero within about 30 seconds of start recording. Now I am using it in some pretty challenging conditions. When I go out skiing, the temperature is pretty cold. It's about minus five, minus six usually. So that will drain the battery quite a lot. I'm also switching it on and off in between the runs. When you come back and you want to charge it up in the evening, I'd say it takes about three hours from completely dead to fully charged. So there's that to bear in mind as well. My advice would be to have like three batteries and ideally with some charger that can do multiple batteries at the same time. I've got a whole other video on how to extend the battery life on your GoPro 8, so if you want, you can click up here and go check that out. Okay, issue number two. The stabilization crop is actually fairly significant and this caught me off guard a few times. Normally when I'm using the GoPro, I'm used to having such a wide field of view that you can't get close enough to the action. Like even if you're a meter or two meters away, when you look at the picture afterwards, everything seems pretty small just because it's got such a wide field of view. With the stabilization crop, actually you need to take a little bit of a step back sometimes when you're filming. So this is super view, this is wide, this is linear, and this is narrow. So when you've got the GoPro 8 in boost mode to maximize the stabilization, this is how much crop you have. I found myself avoiding kind of filming in 240 frames per second or 4K 60 frames per second just because it spits out in this HVEC file which is a real pain to work with and render. So I'll do another video just on that separate issue but um, I've kind of just been avoiding using that which is annoying because it does produce some good stuff. Final con is the white balancing issues. Sometimes I've had problems with, uh, especially when it's pretty cloudy, low light outside and lots of snow and cloud and the camera can't really distinguish between the two of them that well. Okay, so now let's talk about the good stuff. The picture quality on this camera is awesome. The video is very crisp and clear, lots of good detail and the colors in it, even just unedited with the GoPro color on is awesome. The blues for me are a little bit oversaturated, no big deal. If you were really into it and you wanted to make it look good, you can always just record flat and then do some color correction on it yourself afterwards. Even the low light is like pretty good considering the size of the sensor in the GoPro. I mean, it's like all right smartphone quality. The best thing really for me is the stabilization. The HyperSmooth 2.0 is just absolutely insane. It's totally, totally worth getting the camera just for that alone. Going along skiing, it's really bumpy, maybe going over jumps and stuff like that, and the whole time the camera is just super smooth. It's like it's on a gimbal. It's totally, totally incredible. The only problem is because it's so smooth, it almost makes the skiing look slow. So I need to ski better. Final point I wanna make is the audio is actually really impressive. Uh, not something that I thought was gonna be a major selling point for the camera, but it's really good. And uh, good morning from Nazar Onsen. So today I've got a day off and it deals well with echoey stuff when you're in like a small room. It deals really well with background noise and it deals really well with wind as well. So the big question is two months on, would I still buy the camera again? Absolutely yes, without question. Do bear in mind that it's only gonna get cheaper and more affordable. There's probably gonna be a deal in the next couple of months. And the difference in price between the seven and the eight is pretty small. I think it's worth just going for the eight. It is the best GoPro that they've made so far. Also really excited for the third party accessories for them to start coming out. It's gonna be some good stuff and also the official media mods, which should be coming out shortly from GoPro. But, and this is the final point, 
whatever you do, buy extra batteries. <laughs> all right, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next one.